Now, the jury called it a callous confidence trick perpetrated with a cavalier disregard of the potentially fatal consequences. The millionaire fraudster, James McCormick, was today sentenced to 10 years in jail for selling fake bomb detectors around the world, which were nothing more than plastic golf ball finders. Questions are now being asked about how many lives he put at risk and whether he could have been stopped sooner. It was a scam that netted him more than £50 million. But today, Jim McCormick was sentenced to 10 years in prison for selling fake bomb detectors around the world. The judge said it was the most serious case of its kind he'd ever seen. Handing out the sentence, Mr Justice Hone told McCormick, I am wholly satisfied that your fraudulent conduct in selling so many useless devices for simply enormous profits promoted a false sense of security and in all probability materially contributed to causing death and injury to innocent individuals. McCormick spent much of the last decade peddling his wares to security forces and governments around the world, such as on this sales trip to India. But his biggest client was Iraq, where he sold around 6,000 units at prices ranging from $2,500 to $30,000. In truth, the elaborate hoax was just a rebranding of a novelty machine for finding golf balls that he'd bought in the US for $50 apiece. He has shown no shame. He has shown no remorse and he carried on with a complete cavalier disregard for the consequences of his country. In Baghdad, army and police units would march up and down, having been told their own electrostatic energy was powering the units, which have no electric parts at all. It's also alleged McCormick paid millions of pounds in bribes to Iraqi officials to secure lucrative contracts which contributed to his personal fortune. Thailand's military too fell foul of the ruse in 2010. A Channel 4 team filmed Thai officers using one device with little success. We asked the British government when they became aware of the clear failings of McCormick's units, which were only banned in 2010. In response, they simply issued a statement today welcoming the prison sentence. Well, I'm joined now by Liam Fitzgerald Finch, an experienced former army bomb disposal officer who was awarded the Queen's Gallantry Medal for his work in Afghanistan. The judge was, um, was very harsh in his words and, and basically said this man had blood on his hands. I mean, from your perspective, does that seem right? Well, uh, yeah, rightly so. I mean, the judge made uh, some, some very, very valid points. Um, you know, this man is a, he's a confidence trickster. Uh, he was playing on, on people's insecurities and, uh, and people's ignorance. Uh, and I don't mean that to be disrespectful. Um, you know, he went out there and told them that he was selling this, he had this panacea for their problem, this, this bomb detector. Uh, and, uh, uh, and he went ahead and, and, and sold them uh, as such. And people believed it? Yes, they and did. And they went through checkpoints thinking they were then safe? People were using it as, the, as their primary method of, uh, of, of detecting um, um, malicious devices. If you, if, you, if you go to countries like Iraq, or I was in Yemen two weeks ago, they were still using them then. Um, there is a confidence in these devices still, despite all the controversy. I mean, can you explain that? Well, um, you know, Iraqis, and we'll take them as, a, as an example, these are not stupid people. They've been educated just very differently to us. And if their hierarchy are telling them to believe in, the, in this product, then they will do it. It's ingrained in their culture. And so if you know, people, very senior people in, in their food chain are saying to them, you must use these devices, they will use them and they will believe in them. What do you think of the sentence then? I mean, g given... I mean, people have died in, in, in a lot of countries in the, in the Middle East who bought these devices to protect people, thinking that they would work. Well, it's, it's very satisfying that uh, the, the sort of the British legal mechanism has, has found a way to, to prosecute this man. Um, very satisfying indeed. Uh, albeit for f uh, financial crimes rather than uh, the, you know, the, the moral crimes that, that he's actually committed. Um, it would be really nice to see, uh, to have seen a mechanism where he could have been prosecuted for, for, for what he's actually committed. When, when did your community of experts know that this device was a load of rubbish? Because, I mean, it was only banned in Britain from sale in 2010, I think. Right. Uh, I mean, I can speak from, from my experience where I, exper I, I saw it firsthand in Iraq in 2009. But uh, I, I know that we'd been experiencing them for, for a long time before that. Uh, and I think this story has been going on for, what, nearly a decade now? So do, do you think action was taken swiftly enough? Um, when 
when this, uh, this product, when this device was first encountered by well, NATO subject matter experts, uh, yes, we absolutely disproved the validity of it. Uh, I just think there was maybe uh, a loophole uh, or, or a gap in the, the mechanism, the information handling mechanism, where uh, that information was passed up the chain to the political level. Um, politicians knew about this, uh, but... Sorry, but but uh, politicians knew about this, but um, didn't really have the facility to, to do anything about it, maybe because they didn't understand the problem. Well, I mean, do you think it shows the, the level of desperation there is about bomb detection in, in, in these sorts of countries, that they would invest their faith in something that... I mean, it, it does look ridiculous when you see it. It looks like a car aerial on a bit of plastic. It does, but if, if someone's selling you a product they're telling you is the panacea to all of your problems, then there's something inside you that, that makes you want to believe it. Thank you very much indeed, Liam Fitzgerald-Finch. Thanks for coming.